we will be studying about the personal management uh, in developing a career so we are we have uh, just focused on the time management in the previous class so we will be continuing with uh, how we can manage the stress and uh, the conflict in a workplace uh, when we are progressing through a career when we like uh, get into a work uh, we will be assigned with many many of uh, the work responsibility that you might have to complete within the deadline and as well you uh, may need to work with many different type of people uh, so you may uh, come across uh, some kind of conflicts uh, any uh, different sort of opinion may arise in the workplace so how you can handle the stress that arises out of the workload or maybe some personal or professional issues and if any conflict arises within the workplace how you can handle those conflicts okay so what are the strategies you can follow uh, to handle the conflict so the first uh, we will look into the definition of stress so what we are uh, i mean the stress is meant what uh, so how we can formally define so stress is uh, defined as an adaptive response to an external situation that result in physical psychological and or the behavioral deviation from the organization and participants so uh, the stress that uh, comes or that arises uh, as a result of the external situation so it is not created because of your personality uh, your own things uh, whatever happens or whatever you think about so the stress is because of the external events you are stressed or you are feeling the stress uh, because some of uh, the unfavorable situations or some of the negative situations happening in the external environment so that external environment uh, situations or that events uh, can create some physical or otherwise the psychological even it can lead to the behavioral deviation so physical means uh, the behavioral deviation the expected the stress can lead to deviate the employees so yeah the chapters uh, which will be covered in the examination is up to what uh, by what uh, i mean up to uh, the sections now we are covering now okay so i think uh, we have already completed up to chapter 5 and this is the chapter 6 Oh, sorry, it's actually the chapter seven, uh, the sixth chapter. However, we have skipped the chapter six, and this is like, uh, the sixth chapter or something. So, I will immediately upload the chapter in the LMS, and you will have some question in this chapter as well, uh, mainly focusing on the time management, and you can expect some of the question from the sections which are, uh, which I am going to cover today, uh, and. from the previous chapters as well okay is that clear a small examination one hour uh, all would be the mcq questions and no monitoring as well so you can uh, do the examination from whatever the place you want to and whatever the device you want to okay is that clear okay so this is what uh, defined as the stress so it can lead to some behavioral deviation so if you are like uh, expected to complete an activity on time because of uh, the stress so since you are feeling that kind of uh, issues and the psychological feeling you may not able to complete that activity according to the time uh, deadlines so it can lead to some deviations in the behavior as well okay so the stress is uh, the body's general response to the uh, environmental situation so it can uh, it can be like uh, uh, <clears throat> described in another way that uh, it's a general response or body's general response to the environmental situation so environmental situation how our body is uh, uh, responding to the environmental situation so our body like uh, 
the behavioral responses or the physical responses of our body of for the for the stress maybe like uh, the headache or the high blood pressure uh, even it can lead to diabetes and all some kind of uh, medical issues may arise uh, as a result of the stress uh, like uh, uh, the uh, ulcer and that kind of uh, medical issues may arise and the behavioral symptoms also uh, you may feel anxious and uh, uh, angry on the other people like uh, you may be uh, tensed uh, uh, that kind of uh, behavioral symptoms uh, can arise as a result of this stress okay so the nature of stress so what would be the nature of this uh, stress so the stress is the neutral word. So we cannot always like uh, say the stress is a negative one. It's a neutral word. So it can either be positive or it can either be negative. So it's not bad in itself. So the stress can be like uh, categorized into distress and the EU stress. Okay. So distress means it's like uh, extreme anxiety, sorrow or pain. So it's a negative uh, extreme of the stress. So it means uh, you are feeling some kind of uh, anxiety. Uh, you are feeling some kind of like uh, uh, pain or some kind of angriness. So those are the, uh, the negative symptoms or the negative extreme of the stress. So that is called as the distress. Uh, on the other hand, the eustress is called as the positive form of the stress, where it can lead to like uh, some uh, motivation or the stress can uh, work as a motivation. It can lead to improved performance and even the emotional well-being also. These kind of positive stress can contribute to. If you are not stressed about this examination, you will uh, never be studying. You will never be touching these notes. So this stress the examination um, the stress about this examination even the continuous assessment even the lectures so can act as a motivation for you so where you are stressed about the examination but that stress uh, is uh, giving a positive consequences so those are called as the eu stress okay so the stress is associated with the constraint and the demand. So constraint uh, that prevents an individual from doing what he or she desired. Okay. So again, uh, why we are uh, stressing about something? It's because we are constrained. Why uh, you are like uh, stressing about this examination? It's because you are constrained for the time limitation. You are not given the... Uh, plenty of time to study about even your ability may be may not be matching with uh, these kind of uh, notes and the works you are assigned with so that kind of constraint uh, can lead you to uh, become the stressed one and demands refers to the loss of something desired again uh, demand Another reason for this uh, stress could be the demand where you lose something that you desire to have with you. So in such situations also, you may come across with the stress. Okay. Is the slides are shared or not? Is it stop sharing or? I hope now it's shared. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So again, the two conditions that are necessary for the uh, potential stresses to become the actual stress. So the potential stress means uh, you are not actually feeling the stress. Uh, however, you have the potential, like you have the susceptibility to become a stressed one. So those potential stressors uh, which can make you or the conditions uh, which can uh, make the potential stress into the actual stress are the uncertainty over the outcome and outcome must be an important one. So this is the situation which can uh, like convert the potential stress into the actual stress. For example, uh, you are about to uh, write an examination, maybe uh, starting from the 20th onwards. So where you, what results you will get in that examination is uh, uncertain. You cannot uh, predict or you cannot uh, stay with certainty or you cannot like... Uh, yes, yes, of course, I will upload the slides uh, 
once the lectures is finished immediately after the lectures uh, i will upload the slides in the lms you can find it okay so the uncertainty uh, that means uh, you cannot predict the outcome you cannot uh, uh, predict the outcome with uh, shuranal like uh, you cannot like expect or you cannot say okay this is the results i'm going to uh, certainly getting this examination getting this subject so those kind of uh, certainty is not there so in with the future uh, event so there is some uncertainty exists with the future outcome and again the outcome is really important to you so if the outcome is not really important to you you will not be worrying about this outcome so examination results is really important to you the that will decide your overall gpa and overall gpa will decide your employability in future days so this outcome is really important to you but you cannot uh, like uh, with sureness uh, you cannot with certainty can't predict the outcome that uh, you are you will be uh, getting in the future dates so these two conditions may make you or may convert the potential stress to the actual stress so this might be the uh, uh, causes for the stress to arise okay and the stress uh, is not uh, simply the anxiety so when we whenever we are talking about the stress so we always uh, feel like whether the anxiety is referred to as the stress not just the anxiety so it's more than the anxiety so stress may be accompanied by the anxiety so if you are feeling stress then of course you will be anxious so the anxiety uh, accompanies the stress but the both terms the anxiety and stress are different because the stress is not only the negative one it can also be the positive the distress is the negative uh, negative part of the stress you stress is the positive part of the stress so we cannot always say that the anxiety is the stress so anxiety uh, usually accompanies the stress so stress is not necessarily damaging bad or to be avoided so you can't like say that always the anxiety is uh, anxiety is the uh, one that makes or that causes the uh, stress okay so again uh, when we see what are the situation uh, uh, like acting as the causes of the stress uh, what uh, situation or what events uh, put you put yourself under the stress so the causes of stress might be the work pressure or the job loss okay so if you are like uh, the causes can be uh, categorized for the two different kind of people uh, for the adults what could be the causes and in children what could be the causes so for the adults uh, if you are employed by an organization if you are working for an organization or if you are studying then the work pressure may be uh, uh, the uh, materials uh, that you need to study or the exam pressure may act as a, a cause of this stress and if you have uh, lost that job again the job loss might be a, a a big reason for the stress to arise okay and then uh, the death of close people that mean the bereavement so that is like uh, you are losing someone uh, Uh, who is very close to your heart uh, maybe your close relation maybe you are loved ones or maybe someone uh, as a part of your family if you are losing those kind of people again you will be really um, uh, put into a situation where you will feel the sorrowness the loneliness the pain and the anxiety and finally you will be stressed okay and then uh, the relationship challenges like uh, even if you are in a relationship uh, mainly uh, if you have uh, like entered into the marital relationship uh, if you have any issues any um, differences of opinion with your partner with your spouse then of course that can lead to the stress uh, among the adults and then the money worries okay so again the monetary issues like uh, the economic crisis or the financial crisis can even lead to the stress among the people so the sri lanka's present condition makes many people stress about their day to day living even how they are going to like manage their cost of living how they are going to survive in this economic crisis so because uh, even 
the prices are increasing day by day and even the salary they get reduced because of these income tax and uh, other issues. So how they are going to survive with these uh, limited amount of salary and uh, with the uh, among these uh, economic crisis situations. So that can act as a cause for this stress. Okay. So again, when we, these are the stressors uh, or the causes of stress uh, for the adults and what could be the causes of stress for the children? So the social pressure, okay? So maybe like uh, when when you like uh, think about your uh, childhood, how you have uh, uh, had the friendship with uh, someone and uh, having a conflict or like uh, a fight with uh, your best friend may put yourself into the stress. If you are like, uh, uh, if you have been uh, fighting with your friends, then you will not be uh, able to focus in on the uh, studies, uh, the other uh, sports even. So you will not be um, doing anything. Uh, just uh, sitting alone can uh, lead you or put yourself under the stress and studying for the examination and if you are whenever you are uh, being a student uh, even the school student even now also the exam pressure uh, can give you some kind of stress and even the parental divorce and another issue the family issues uh, like uh, the parental divorce or any other kind of issues like uh, 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 the conflicts uh, between the partners or uh, the parents, uh, the mother and father, even uh, the father, uh, any other family issues like uh, the financial crisis of this kind, uh, family and the income issues. And if the father is like uh, drinking or something, so those kind of parental issues can also uh, put the children under the stress situation. So this can be the causes for stress uh, for the children. So the adult, the causes for stress for the adult, uh, we can mainly categorize into four and the causes for children, we can categorize into three, okay? So that is the, uh, the stress, that is about the stress, the causes of stress. So this is simply those causes of stress can be uh, many that uh, you will be uh, studying about those causes uh, very clearly in very detail in organizational behavior. So this is like uh, the common causes in general, how we can categorize these causes. So in general, uh, how we can identify the causes for the adult and for the children. Uh, is that clear? Anything to ask about this stress? Is that clear or not? If you are clear, you can uh, like put it in the chat box. If you need any further explanation, even that can also be put it in the chat box. Okay. Uh, okay. If it is clear, uh, we will move to the other part, the conflict. So how uh, the stress and conflict can be managed is this uh, this part so uh, the conflict so if you have like uh, come across any conflict in your work so how you can manage those so for that uh, we will first need to understand the concept uh, conflict so the conflict uh, which occurs when two or more people oppose one another because their needs wants or goals or values are different from one another so why this conflict uh, is arising? Because uh, if one person is only one person is there, uh, if that person, uh, the needs and wants uh, are fully satisfied, there is no any chance of conflict. Even that uh, person don't want to uh, fight with others or don't want to argue with others. When this conflict actually arises is when there are two or more parties. When there are two or more people where their views or their needs are opposed from one another. You uh, have uh, some kind of things, uh, uh, some uh, issues or some goods and services where the others uh, have some other goals and uh, their needs are something different. Then you both won't be in agreement and your opinions, uh, you will be arguing with each other. So that kind of situation is called as the conflict. So conflict is always uh, almost accompanied by the feeling of anger, frustration, hurt, anxiety or the fear. 
so usually whenever you are in conflict with your friend for example just uh, think about the conflicting situation with your friends you want to like uh, uh, for example uh, you want to go for a movie and your friends want to uh, go for an outing uh, to somewhere else so if you are not uh, agreeing to uh, go for an outing to for example for beach uh your friend will like uh, feel uh, angry or some like uh, frustration or hurt and if your friend is not agreeing uh, with you to come for the movie again you will feel the same so here you both have the different opinion different needs you want to go for a uh, movie but your friend want to go for the beach so here both have the different needs uh, they are uh, the both have the different votes so this is just a simple situation but when it comes to the organizational context uh, they will be like uh, having different goals values uh, even their needs and wants are different so whenever these uh, goals and uh, uh, needs and wants are in conflict like uh, whenever they are opposed to one another uh, the both parties will be uh, uh, in conflict with each other so conflict uh, is almost a uh, Uh, whenever we are feeling this uh, conflict or whenever we are in conflict you we will be all may almost uh, like uh, uh, experiencing this anger frustration the hurt uh, anxiety or the fear so how this uh, conflict have been viewed by the scholars uh, working on this field so first uh, we can see the, or we can categorize the view of conflict into two the first is the traditional conflict or the traditional view of the conflict and the second category is the current view of conflict how the conflict has been viewed uh, in traditional way and how the conflict has been viewed in the recent days okay so in traditional days so oh, in traditionally uh, the conflict uh, is uh, viewed as a negative thing and the people and the uh, scholars say that it should be avoidable so it should be avoided the conflict cannot uh, we can't have the conflict uh, so that uh, we need to always look for the conflict to be avoided and the currently what is uh, uh viewed or current perspective of the conflict is like conflict is inevitable we cannot like uh, eliminate the conflict uh, we cannot uh, avoid the conflict at all so it's inevitable the conflict uh, is there in the organization and uh, it should be there at least to some extent the conflict should be there so that is what uh, the current view explains like uh, uh whenever you are having or uh, whenever an organization has a meeting uh like uh, to decide about something or to generate some uh, new ideas if uh, one person uh proposes their idea uh to the other people in the meeting if uh no one is uh, having the conflict with that idea no one is opposing that idea no one is arguing or commenting on that idea uh, everyone will go with that idea the organization ultimately go with that uh, uh, one and only idea proposed by that particular person okay uh, so in this situation sometimes uh, other potential ideas or other uh, best ideas are not even identified or are not even recognized or even expressed by the other people and the organization go for a uh, uh, for, for an idea that is not the best one okay so if uh, the conflict is there that the other people are not agreeing with that idea uh, they can like suggest some other uh, then other people can uh, come up with uh, many different ideas so that can go for an argument by other people so the pros and cons of each ideas can be uh, commented and it can be argued and the best can be chosen so in that situation the conflict is uh, really necessary for the organization so it's inevitable so that is the current view so the uh, earlier it says that so current view says that uh, at least a certain amount of conflict should be there in the organization the conflict should not be avoided entirely okay so again the traditional view the conflict is caused by the management error in designing the organization or by making 
the troublemakers okay so how the conflict is created in an organization it because of the management error the management is the one that is creating the error if the management like uh, uh, makes any error or any uh, faulty things only the conflict arises otherwise everything will be functioning uh, very smoothly no conflict uh, no people will be opposing anything so everything will goes like uh, in a very smooth way that is the traditional way so the current uh, view says that the conflict arises from many causes not only because of the management error uh, because of the organizational structure uh, unavoidable differences in the goal the different people may have different uh, goals in perception the values of the specialized personnel so specialized personnel in, uh, in the sense like uh, the people who are uh, the specialized uh, experts who works for an organization so they may have different values so some may wish to have uh, the freedom uh, like uh, without being controlled by the other people but some people say that no no we need to have a system to control other people we need to have the fingerprint system to monitor the attendance of the uh, professionals but other professional other people may think like uh, no no it's a professional freedom we are we should not be restricted by this fingerprint system we should be uh, given the freedom to come and go uh, whatever the time we want to the, our task is to complete the goal or our job is to complete the task at time that is not only that uh, our goal so that's how the people may think so the, how, that's how the values of the specialized personnel may vary so even that uh, varying values can lead to the country that is the current view not only because the conflict arises not only because of the management fault uh, or the management errors or the troublemakers it can arise as a result of these uh, difference in goal difference in values different perception as well and again the traditional view says that the conflict disturbs the organization and prevents the optimal performance so if there is a conflict uh, in an organization uh, traditionally it has been viewed that uh, uh, it will disturb the performance of the organization uh, it will create some uh, like uh, uh, interruptions in the performance or the flow of the organization even uh, it, the organization cannot able to get the optimum level of performance with the conflict but currently it has been viewed that uh, like conflict contributes and distract from the organizational performance in varying decrease so the conflict is not always distracting the performance it can also contribute to the improved performance as well sometimes the conflict may be distracting these uh, organizational performance however in some situation it can also contribute to the improved performance and again the next view is uh, the task of the management is to eliminate the conflict so since the conflict has been uh, viewed to be uh, an avoidable thing it should be avoided then uh, the management task is to avoid the conflict at all so the management need to keep the organization without any conflict at all so that that is the uh, traditional view of this country current view says that the task of the management is to manage the level of conflict and resolution for optimal organizational performance the management should not uh, eliminate the conflict at all it should not it should not keep the organization without any conflict what the management has to do is yeah, they have to manage the conflict at the uh, optimum level of conflict should be maintained then only the management or the performance could be improved the ideas could be arising the people could uh, criticize on the ideas and they will come up with the new ideas new better solutions even so what the management has to do is they have to manage the conflict at the organization and then uh, the optimal organizational performance requires the removal of conflict since it is viewed as a negative thing in the traditional view uh, the management has to eliminate the conflict and if you need, if you want to achieve the optimal level of performance the guy the conflict has to be removed and the current view says that optimum organizational performance requires a moderate level of conflict so you the current view says that the conflict should be there it should not be avoided entirely a certain level of conflict is needed to achieve the optimum level of performance okay so this is the uh, difference between the uh, current view and the traditional view of the country and when we see the types of conflict uh, what uh, are the different types of conflict how this country could be categorized the first one intrapersonal conflict like conflict with an individual 
within an individual. The conflict which arises within an individual is called as the intrapersonal conflict. Maybe like uh, your mind may say something and uh, you are uh, like uh, the values and you may be uh, having different values with, uh, about something. For example, like uh, uh, you may be like uh, uh, feeling to talk to someone else uh, with uh, someone close to your heart, but your mind says that, no, no, that person hasn't called you. Uh, that person has ignored you. You should not talk to them. So that kind of uh, conflict may arise within yourself, within an individual. That is called as the intrapersonal conflict. And interpersonal conflict, that occurs between two individuals, maybe uh, two uh, friends or two uh, colleagues within the organization. So if a conflict arises between two people, that is called as the interpersonal conflict. And organizational conflict, it involves the disagreement among the parties. So it is not the conflict between two individuals. So it is the conflict between two parties. Maybe if uh, an organization has different departments, then um, uh, that departments may be conflicting with each other. So that is called as the organizational conflict. And then constructive conflict. The outcome of conflict is uh, the productive. So if a conflict arises, and as a result of that conflict, uh, the, there is some improvement in performance, or the better outcome is uh, uh, reached because of that conflict. So since the people are conflicting one's opinion, one's idea in the meeting only, in a brainstorming meeting only, uh, other people come up with uh, some better idea, better solutions, even uh, that could be the best idea or to be implemented. So in that situation, the outcome is really a positive one uh, that comes or that uh, arises because of this conflict. So in that situation, these conflicts are called as the constructive conflict. Okay. And other type is the destructive conflict. It is the conflict uh, that is mishandled or mismanaged by the parties involved and then unproductive results will be generated. So other conflict, other two, other type of conflict is the uh, destructive conflict. So that is uh, like mismanaged by the parties who are involved in the conflict. And the outcome of this destructive conflict would be uh, a negative one. Okay. So these are the types of conflict. And the conflict, uh, the next one is how we can manage the conflict. That is, Yeah, com 139. Okay, so the next one is how we can manage the conflict. Okay, so what we can do to uh, manage the conflict, manage in the sense we are not avoiding it entirely, we are keeping the optimum level, a certain level of conflict, a moderate level of conflict. Okay, so the conflict management is the practice of identifying and handling the conflict in a sensible, fair, and efficient manner. That is, uh, you have to first identify a uh, conflict is there, uh, some kind of disagreement is there, and that should be uh, handled in a sensible, fair, and an efficient manner. That is the conflict management. So the conflict management, uh, uh, like you cannot manage the conflict in a proper way without certain skills. So it requires the people to have uh, the skills like effective communication, uh, the problem solving skill, the negotiating skills, and uh, you have to focus on the interest. Okay, so those kind of skills are really necessary for the people who are managing the conflicts. Okay, so as an individual, what you can do to manage these uh, conflicts are uh, first one, you can engage in the meditation. Okay, so uh, the meditation in the sense like uh, you can involve in some kind of uh, some like uh, meditative activity, some breathing activity uh, and uh, some, some kind of things you can engage in. And then in uh, the cognitive uh, restructuring. Okay. So the cognitive restructuring in the sense you can like uh, change your uh, thinking pattern. Uh, so that uh, you can avoid these uh, intrapersonal conflict. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, some kind of time, uh, the mind could be changed uh, from 
like uh, you can avoid these intrapersonal conflict because uh, the conflict within yourself could be uh, avoided with these uh, cognitive restructuring and the muscle relaxation like uh, uh, like uh, you can engage in some physical activity go to the gym uh, the swimming so those kind of activity could be uh, uh, you can engage in to avoid this conflict and the next one is uh, the biofeedback that is like a technique that you can use to learn to control your body's functions, like uh, the heart rate. So those kind of techniques could be learned because uh, the heart rate and the high blood pressure is a result of conflict. Like, uh, so as a result of conflict, you will be uh, stressed. You will be uh, feeling the anxious, the anger, fear, and hurt, and all. So, in this situation, uh, by engaging in these uh, biofeedback, uh, the techniques, you can like control those kind of things and uh, managing your time properly. The time management is one of the uh, most important techniques that you can follow to avoid this country. These are the strategies uh, could be followed as an individual. Okay, and. The organizational strategies, uh, as an organization, what uh, the organization can do to avoid the conflict or keep the uh, moderate level of conflict in their organization. Uh, the first one is job design, uh, changes in the workloads, like designing the job uh, in a proper way so that uh, the unnecessary conflict could be avoided. Uh, the people the, have the clear responsibility, clear authority, uh, the clear uh, chain of command. So in such way, the job should be divided by the organization or designed by the organization. And then changes in the workload. So the workload could be assigned. Uh, the Everyone should know clearly what is the workload assigned to them, themselves. So there should not be any conflict or any confusions in the workload assigned to a particular person. And then the flexible working hours. Okay. So you, the organization can allow the employees to work uh, according to their flexibility. They are, they should not restrict the employee to come to the office like uh, at 8.30 and leave it at uh, 4.30. So they can let the employees to work uh, in a very flexible manner. And uh, what they can require is uh, they can like uh, require the outcome to be achieved at the end. Okay. And then uh, the workshop dealing with uh, role clarity and the role analysis. So why the conflict is arising in an organization is because of the uh, some vagueness in the role uh, played by the people. So they are not very much clear about the role to be played by each and every one. So that's the main reason uh, why because the conflict is arising in an organizational country. So they can hold a workshop, uh, the organization can arrange for the workshop to clarify the roles and responsibilities to be handled, uh, to be fulfilled by everyone else in the organization. Okay, So all these strategies could be followed by an organization to avoid the conflict in their organization. Is that clear? Is it clear or anything to be asked? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I will be uploading the slides uh, once the lecture is finished. Okay, since we have started at uh, 8.15, uh, we can go for some time. Uh, we will move to the other chapter. Okay. That is again a simple chapter dealing with uh, the skills for the organization, how uh, the career skills, uh, how the skills in for the uh, career could be uh, improved, especially focusing on the soft skills. Okay. If the slides are shared, Yes, ma'am. Okay. So the seventh chapter is about improving uh, the skills for the career, especially focusing on the uh, soft skills. Okay. So what the skills in the sense are throughout the chapter, throughout the uh, course, we are always looking for the skills which are really needed for a career or uh, the employees uh, are looking for from a uh, candidate uh, who applies for the job, okay? So this chapter specially focuses on the soft skills, okay? So an illustration of the group of uh, two meetings, uh, like uh, chatting or shaking hands, can call me uh, as a, uh, like, uh, 
the soft skills so soft skills uh, is are the personality traits and behaviors that will help the candidates get hired and succeed in their work so soft skills uh, are the personality traits and behaviors so it is not like a technical thing you are not doing anything technically uh, according to the per, uh, soft skills so soft skill is a personality that uh, that is with the individual the, the soft skills are not actually learned like uh, uh, like uh, you are not doing anything technically under this uh, soft skills so it's like a personality and how you behave is what called as the technical i mean the soft skill and that will decide whether the candidate get hired or uh, whether the candidate is succeeding in their work so unlike the technical skills or uh, we can call the technical skills or the other side of the skill as the hard skill the soft skills are the interpersonal and the behavioral skill that uh, help you work well with the people and develop the career so especially these uh, soft skills uh, we can also call it as the uh, like transferable skills as well so this skill uh, uh, mainly focusing on the interpersonal skill and the behavioral skill the interpersonal and the behavioral skill uh that uh what for what these uh, interpersonal skills and behavioral skills could help you is uh, to deal with other people uh to work well with other people so that uh, it will help you to succeed in the organization and develop the career because uh, whatever the career you are engaged in you have to deal with uh, the people uh, the people who work with uh, maybe the people you may be if you are engaged in a service sector you may be dealing with the clients even so in that situation these interpersonal skills will help you to deal uh, or work well with them and uh, through that you can develop your career yeah. and soft, soft skills are the ability that relate uh, how you work and interact with other people so those are the ability how you are working and interacting with other people that is mainly the soft skill so commonly noted the soft skill include like uh, the communication teamwork and other interpersonal skills are commonly uh, referred to as the soft skills so whatever the skill you need to deal with other people to work with other people are usually called as the soft skills so employers look for the candidates with soft skill as the skills are hard to teach and are important for the long term success so employers uh, what they will do is uh, whenever they are recruiting the people for their organization they will have a certain set of uh, uh, examination or certain set of test to uh, check whether the candidates are having this uh, soft skill or not because uh, once they once the candidate uh, get hired by the organization then uh, it may be very difficult for the organization to develop certain kind of soft skills because these soft skills are very difficult to be teach and uh, it should uh, come or it should like uh, come with the personality and the soft skills are developed as a result of a long term process so within a certain period of time the organization cannot actually develop the soft skill so what they are doing is they are looking for the candidates with the uh, soft skill they are expecting to have whenever they are recruiting they have the test for the uh, soft skills and if the candidates fulfill the requirement of that organization only the candidates will be get hired by the organization okay so the soft skills are different from the hard skill because uh, the uh, hard skills are very technical in nature and they are very soft uh, job specific so hard skills uh, could be uh, teached for the candidates within a short period of time and the organization can do that but the soft skills are very difficult to teach uh, the candidate uh, himself or his uh, uh, herself has to engage in learning these soft skills so the organization cannot force the candidate to learn these kind of soft skills so these soft skills are sometimes called as the transferable skill or the employability skill by the employers as well okay so sometimes uh, they are called as the transferable and sometimes uh, the employability skills okay so how these uh, soft skills are differing from these uh, hard skill so hard skill as i said uh, they are very technical in nature they are they are very uh, job specific for example like uh, if you want to uh, perform the job of a mechanic then you should have uh, the knowledge of that uh, technical things how to handle with uh, these vehicles and all uh, so those kind of technical knowledge is really necessary for the person to uh, work as an uh, mechanical engineer or those kind of technical knowledge is needed okay 
So those technical knowledge is called as the hard skill. For hard skill are the job related competency and ability that are necessary to complete the work that without that uh, hard skill, without that knowledge of these uh, engineering, the technical things, the engineer cannot do the task. They cannot complete the work. While the soft skills are the personal quality and traits that impact how you work. So the personal quality without the soft skills, uh, you can able to complete the task uh, to some extent, but uh, we cannot say that you are performing very well in the job. So how you work will be decided with the soft skill. So the soft hard skills are often applicable to a certain career. The soft skills are transferable to any type of the job. That's why uh, the soft skills are also called as the transferable skill. Because if you have the knowledge to uh, work as an engineer, that you have learned engineering uh, for, for uh, like uh, uh, engineering or the medical profession, you can uh, just be an engineer or maybe a medical doctor okay so a medical doctor cannot perform the role of an engineer even the engineer cannot perform the role of the medical doctor so it is very specific to that particular job only it's a certain career it's only applicable to a particular career but the soft skills like uh, the communication the interpersonal skill when even you are performing the role of engineer even you are performing the role of a medical doctor you need this communication skill Okay, so that doesn't like uh, restricted to a particular type of job. So it can be transferred from one job to another. That's why the soft skills are called as the transferable skill. The key difference between the hard skill and the job skill are how they are gained and put to use in the workplace. So the key uh, difference is uh, how we are learning these hard skills and the soft skills and uh, how we are applying those skills in the job. So hard skills are often gained through the education or the specific training. How uh, a doctor learns about this medical profession is by having the education of uh, MBBS over five years. How the engineers get the knowledge of this engineering because uh, having a bachelor's degree in engineering for four years. So that is through the education, through the training and internship, they are gaining that particular knowledge. Uh, they include the competency like uh, how to use a certain machine, how to use a, a certain software or any other tool. So uh, that will be learned in uh, the, through the education or training. So those are called as the car, uh, hard skills. And the soft skills are more often seen as a personality traits. And you may have uh, spent your whole life developing these soft skills. So you these uh, communication and interpersonal skills cannot be like uh, learned within a day, within four years of time. So it is learned throughout the life. Whenever you become an adult, whenever you become like a... Uh, able to understand the things uh, happening around yourself, you started to develop the communication skill. Whenever you started to speak uh, for the very first time, you started to develop the communication skill. So you, uh, as an individual, developing the uh, soft skill throughout your life. So they are called upon when you manage your time, communicate with other people or confront a difficult situation for the first time. So whenever you uh, try to manage your time, try to... Uh, get ready for the school, try to wake up on a time, you started to develop your uh, time management skill. That is one of the soft skills. And again, when you started to communicate, talk to other people, you started to communicate or develop the communication skill. So whenever you started to like uh, dealing with some conflict or difficult situation, you started to develop that adaptability skill. Those are the uh, kind of, uh, soft skills that you develop throughout your lifetime. Okay. So the example for this uh, soft skill and hard skill are the hard skill include like uh, the classroom management, uh, the video production, uh, carpentry, search engine optimization, budgeting or accounting works, uh, managing the projects, engineering, copywriting, data mining, so cardio like uh, 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 resuscitation. So those kind of things or some medical things are called as the hard skills. So hard skills are uh, are not limited to this list. These are some of the extracted example of this hard skill. Whatever the technical skill a person needed to perform a particular job is called as the hard skill. Okay. An example of uh, the soft skills include like uh, the teamwork, critical thinking, 
uh, integrity, adaptability, professionalism, creativity, resilience, uh, dependability, empathy, and organization, organizing the things and work. So we are called that the uh, example of soft skills. So even the soft skills are not limited to this set. Uh, these are some extracted example of these uh, soft skills. Okay. Now we will see how these soft skills could be developed. What we can do uh, to develop uh, each soft skill, uh, the most uh, preferable soft skills. So the first most important soft skill is the communication. So you can communicate or you can use the communication skill uh, in a lot of different jobs, like uh, whatever the job you are engaging in, the communication is really necessary. Even uh, if you are engaging a manufacturing firm, uh, if you are working for a manufacturing firm, if you are not dealing with the customers even, you need to deal with uh, your colleagues, the people who work with yourself. So the communication is really necessary for every kind of job. And you use the communication skill uh, whenever you are writing emails, uh, dealing with the customers, reading instruction, helping and uh, caring for other people. Even you are not communicating, you are not telling, you are not conveying anything to other people. Uh, in order to get uh, what, uh, in order to listen what other people are saying, in order to get the content uh, that is in uh, written down in a particular uh, document, you need this communication skill. Even to read uh, uh, the instructions, even to read the documents, even to listen to other people, the communication skills are really necessary. So how you can improve this communication is you can develop your communication skill by meeting new people and working with them. That is the best way how we can develop this communication by uh, meeting new people and by working with them by uh, communicating or by interacting with them, we can develop this communication skill. So uh, usually it is said the best way to learn a language is to uh, be with uh, the people who are talking that kind of language, that particular language and dealing with them by interacting them. That gives you the uh, more knowledge than uh, studying that language through a teacher. Okay, so specifically to improve these uh, communication skills, you can like join a sports team or creative arts club because you need to uh, deal with new people. You need to interact with new people so that uh, in order to find the new people, you can uh, join the clubs and teams and volunteer somewhere. You will uh, talk to the public. So you should not trust yourself only to the work. You can voluntarily engage in some kind of social activity where you are required to talk with other people and practice making phone calls and video calls, uh, not just with uh, conveying everything through the email, everything to the, uh, uh, by the way of uh, texting to the other people, you can practice like uh, making phone calls and video conferences, video calls and all. And take uh, some online courses if you are not uh, very much familiar with uh, some particular language. You can even go for a training. You can take some uh, online courses by yourself, like uh, how to give a presentation, how to develop some spoken skills and all. Those kind of skills uh, could be learned by yourself uh, by engaging in some online courses. And the second type of skill is the leadership skill. Okay, so the leadership skills are not just for the manager. So leadership skills uh, is not only needed for the people who is leading the organization. So it's necessary for each and everyone. Whenever you are put into a team, you may need that leadership skill. So it's really necessary for everyone uh, who works for an organization. So having the leadership skill shows an employer uh, that you can manage yourself and your workload. So the, the expressing the leadership skill or having this leadership skill give an opinion to the employer that you are a person that uh, you could able to manage your work and your workload. Then only uh, you will be get hired, even you will be get promoted or you will be assigned to some work. So you might have the experience using the leadership like uh, the time management, the conflict management, the problem solving skill, even mentoring. We know like uh, advising or supporting the other junior people. Those kind of things are even uh, skills are even fall under the category of the leadership. So what you can do to improve this leadership skill is uh, organize your schedule by uh, creating a timeline. Like uh, in order to develop the time management skill, you can organize your work uh, by creating a timeline. What uh, I'm going to do 
for this particular time period and resolve the conflict between the friends and colleagues uh, the conflict management skills could be uh, learned through uh, resolving the conflict between uh, other two friends or other two conflict uh, other two colleagues you can in, like uh, engage in that uh, uh, conflict uh, like uh, compromise themselves and get them into a, a resolved situation and then motivate others uh, that you could uh, do this by organizing the activities, the fun, no educational uh, like quizzes or something. Those kind of things could be organized by yourself so that uh, you can motivate other people to do or perform even better and teach skill to others. You could create the instruction manuals or the videos to share with uh, many uh, family or friends so those kind of uh, skills could be learned to uh, improve the leadership skill and other type of skill is the positivity okay so the positivity uh, is a good attitude uh, that is something a lot of employees looking for so you should the employees are looking for the positive employees so the employee should not be negative they have to like uh, see the situation in a positive way so the employees look for the people who see the situation or the solutions, uh, not the problem. So some employees or some people always look for the problem in everything. So they will always think about something in a very negative way. Some people are very optimistic and they will see everything in a positive way. So uh, you use the positive skills like uh, stay calm in the stressful situation. The positive people are very calm and they will not be stressed in uh, any situation and look for the answers to the problem. So even they are facing any problem, they will uh, try to find out a solution to the problem. They will not always be thinking about the problem and have a, a can-do attitude. Like uh, they will have an attitude like uh, I can do, I can complete, I can solve, I can move on. So those kind of things and improve your positivity. And to develop the positivity, skill what you can do is uh, do a free course around the personal growth and well-being so you can engage in that kind of things uh, solve the problem when things go wrong so if you found something like uh, the things are going wrong you can find a solution to uh, get the things uh, back to the situation back to the normal situation and network like uh, uh, having a network with other people whether for the work or education show a good attitude to learn and grow and be part of the team so being a part of the team will uh, improve your positivity improve your synergy and like uh, sports the creative arts to show you are a team player okay and the other thing is uh, other other skill is the problem solving skill so even uh, the problem solving skill the employees are looking for the employees uh, to solve the problem if anything arises if any issue any problem arises the employee should be able to solve those things okay so you might use the problem solving skill when uh, dealing with a customer's problem, okay? So, and whenever you are dealing with a customer's problem, you could be able to solve it. Doing research to understand a situation. So you have to, uh, if you are uh, in a, like uh, faced with a problem, you have to do a research. What's the reason? What's the cause for this problem? Why this problem this ha uh, has arisen? And what could be the solution? What are the alternatives available? for this problem to be solved and asking the question to help uh, you understand the bigger picture okay so and improve your problem solving skills so what you can do to improve the skills uh, play the logical puzzles and games some some uh, problematic games could be played by yourself so the researchers have found that uh, playing that kind of puzzles and that kind of uh, specific games will improve your mood uh, improve the problem solving skills like uh, the chess and all uh, those kind of things uh, are improving the problem solving skill and keep a journal like uh, you have to maintain a journal like a diary look at your mindset and how you look at uh, solving the problem uh, get involved in the project with others uh, where you solve the problem together so when you need to uh, solve a problem as a team, you have to get involved with the other people and try a brainstorming and developing plan for problem you have. So you can engage in a brainstorming session like uh, you can uh, talk to other people, get their ideas and uh, discuss on those ideas and choose the best idea to uh, solve that issue. Okay. So these are the things you can do to develop these soft skills. Okay. And some parts are remaining. And we will be like uh, looking into those parts in the next class. Uh, is it clear anything to ask uh, on these uh, soft skill part, the introduction?
Do you have anything to ask? Anything to clarify? Is it clear? I will clear or not. Okay, is that if it is clear, we, we can uh, wind up the class and uh, please inform others that uh, you will be having the second continuous assessment examination on Saturday, 7 to 8 p.m. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you.